I wanted to make this quick video describing something I've recently been seeing on tech Twitter more than others, but also on YouTube. And I've covered this so many times before with how different creators are essentially causing this tech vacuum. And I don't necessarily mean it in the sense that everybody's using the same technology because I don't think that's even the case. I just think there's a huge portion of these creators that are saying the exact same thing over and over again without adding any substantial value to what they're saying. So we can start this off with what does it even mean to be in a vacuum? Merriam Webster says separate from outside events or influence. You can see here, what does it mean to be living in a vacuum? A state of isolation from outside influences, people who live in a vacuum, et cetera, et cetera, so that the world outside of them is of no moment. Sure, maybe that helps us kind of craft the definition, but for me, in terms of tech, living in a vacuum means you are just in this one zone, this one pillar, and all of your information comes from like a very limited amount of sources. And you are judging and basing a lot of your decision making on just those sources. So I made this illustration to kind of give you a very simple explanation of what I think a vacuum is in tech. And basically, if you're in this vacuum, uh, you can think of each of these rectangles as pieces of information, right? Each of them are respective different tidbits of info regarding like a programming language or a framework or just how to build system design, whatever it is, right? If you're in this vacuum, you are pretty much just limited to like the piece of information that live in this vacuum. And I'm not necessarily saying this is a bad thing, but it's going to get to the point where all you kind of do is hear the same uh, opinions over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, where in reality, if you kind of zoom out, there's like plenty more information available to you, but you just have to get out of this vacuum. There's a lot of different pieces of information that you can absorb that make you a better person, a better programmer, a better engineer, so much more knowledgeable on certain topics when you kind of break out of this vacuum. My whole reasoning here is particularly with the job market and how it pertains to junior engineers. I've noticed that a lot of people who have these kind of Twitter spaces or make certain piece of content kind of repeat the same thing when it comes to junior engineers and suggesting to do the same things over and over and over again. Yes, we've all heard that you have to have the good resume. We all heard about networking. We've all heard about making a portfolio site, doing X, Y, Z. And the first time you hear it, even the first couple of times you hear it, you're like, yes, this is good information. Makes sense. I should definitely polish my portfolio or I should definitely polish my resume to make it more appealing to the recruiter. But it really, you know, it's just regurgitated over and over and over again. And I really wonder for people who are stuck in this vacuum, aren't you kind of sick of hearing the same thing? Like, doesn't there come a point where you're like, okay, I get it. My resume is nice. My portfolio website is good. I've done lead code. Like, isn't there a point where you have to be thinking like what else is beyond the scope that I should learn as a junior engineer or somebody who wants to break into the industry? I always hear that too, breaking into the industry. You want to make it into the industry. Like, it's not that serious. We're writing code. We're editing files. Like, it's... It's really not that big of a topic or requires any sort of mentorship or guidance. I mean, maybe there's something you need to hear for the first couple of times that gets like a light bulb moment, but you don't need someone to give you weekly pieces of advice or tips or knowledge information dumps to get you to a level where you can break into the industry. Doubling down what I just said, I keep hearing like, make sure your resume is good. Okay, cool. So improve your resume, get it reviewed by a few people, all perfect. Network, okay, that you can use Discord, you can use Twitter, you can go to events, networking is really good. Portfolio site, I mean, if you're not a designer or like a front end engineer, I truly don't think this one's valuable. I don't have a portfolio site. I think you should just have other things. Uh, and then lead code, very, very standard piece of advice you always hear. I'm gonna give you some piece of advice I think don't get mentioned enough and probably should. And not that I necessarily disagree with these, I just think like they're, they're redundant, right? So I'm gonna give you kind of my versions of things I don't hear, but I should hear more often on how you wanna break into the industry. That's so funny. Work on open source projects. And I don't mean this because if you work on an open source project, you can get hired right away. You're gonna showcase this. Like, I think it's good to add to your resume the project that you've contributed to, that you've helped open source. And 
a lot of people fail to realize this is a great way to network and it's a great way to get your name out there because if you are a maintainer or you contribute to an open source project and let's just say another maintainer or another core contributor recognizes your work and there's a job opportunity like there is a there is a possibility they will ask you like hey are you looking for a job i've seen your work i know what you're capable of like my company is hiring for a person just like you. So open source projects is great. So a second point that a lot of people don't discuss is uh, redocumentation. Now you may be thinking, why do redocumentation if I'm trying to get hired? It's actually pretty obvious. Um, if you can read documentation on like a piece of technology that a company you want to apply for is using or is heavily in their tech stack, this will only showcase that you could come into an interview really knowing what you're talking about. Reading documentation and actually going there as the first source of truth as opposed to like a YouTube video or anything like this is a great way to actually build foundational knowledge on a particular topic that there's a good chance that the interviewer or someone you're talking to about a potential opportunity may have forgotten or may have never even known. So redocumentation as like the first step for anything, I think is really good advice. A lot of people say it, gonna say it again the last one i want to kind of discuss here is like don't fall into uh new tech traps this is particularly evident in like javascript ecosystems um i think new tech is absolutely great new tech and like things that a lot of smart teams are building anywhere is phenomenal and it's probably going to take off uh whenever but a trap that I see a lot of new people fall into is like, oh, I've been learning and writing with PHP, but everyone talks about TypeScript and uh, TRPC and all this stuff. I should just abandon what I know to pick these things up. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I've made plenty of videos where I've showcased the number of jobs that exist for a language like Java. And I know Java is not the sexiest programming language, but in terms of just pure metrics, there's a ton of job openings for Java developers. And so don't fall into new tech tracks. If there's a new trendy piece of tech that's out there, that's just released, like don't abandon ship and just fall for that and abandon everything you learn to pick it up and apply to jobs with this piece of tech. Fact of the matter, a lot of established tech companies don't move tech that often. If their backend is developed in one language, it's gonna be a hell of an effort to migrate that to another language. Or if they have a core API layer framework, it's gonna take a lot to move on to the next sexy thing. So really like take it slow with what you learn and have confidence in that. You don't necessarily need to jump into the hottest thing that's trending on tech Twitter or GitHub. And the last thing I wanna talk about that no one really seems to discuss at all in these like Twitter spaces or anything, it's like have fun with programming like really and i know a lot of people switch careers late in their life and maybe they have different reasons to doing that so there's more pressure or maybe you really need to get find a job to pay off bills or whatever and i get it life gets in the way trust me uh we all understand but like have fun with programming like writing resumes networking making portfolio sets lead code like it's not really fun you know what i'm saying like no one's just gonna be like oh you know what i'm gonna do today i'm gonna go network like or I'm gonna improve my resume. Like they do this because they have a goal of getting hired or something like that. When it comes to programming, you can avoid a lot of burnout and a lot of these, what do I do's? If you just have fun with programming and genuinely have fun with programming, not just doing it because you think, oh, if I learn this, I'll get better. Or, oh, my favorite Primogen video talked about this, I should do that. Just have fun with it. Whether you're programming in PHP or whether you're programming in TypeScript with the sexiest thing that's out there, or whether you're programming in Go and you're a big fan of channels like mine, so comment, like, and subscribe for more of this kind of content, just have fun with it. It goes a long way and it makes the grind feel less daunting and more enjoyable. So that's it. That's all I had for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with my statement about this tech Twitter vacuum that I talked about? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate all of your support on this and uh, yeah, appreciate it. And by the way, thank you for 25,000 subscribers. Let's get to the new next milestone. Comment, like, and subscribe. Stay coding, bruh. And you gotta power it.